ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول كل بدعة ضلالة. The Sheikh says today there are some people who ascribe to knowledge and they become angry when someone that they love is refuted for a mistake that he makes and it is as if he claims or he sees that this is tabdiyah this is you 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 know you you're accusing this person of being an innovator and this is not true right just because someone is criticized or refuted does not mean that this is automatic tabdiyah of that individual right the sheikh says a knowledge based refutation built upon the quran and the sunnah and the statements of the of the leading scholars and the salaf unfortunately there are people who see this to be tabdi' who see this to be declaring someone to be an innovator this is not true right even if the person doesn't even declare the one being refuted to be an innovator no the sheikh says this <coughs> is deviation from the straight way it is deviation from the way of the righteous salaf because a refutation which is built upon evidence this is from the most important foundations of the people of the sunnah and so they refute every mukhalif everyone who opposes even if it's from amongst themselves they will refute that individual <coughs> with evidences now obviously depending on that mistake and depending on what it is then you know will 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 determine how they treat that individual now since we we are on this point since the sheikh mentioned this uh, there's something important uh, that we should maybe expand upon this a bit more which is that so so what's the shubha what's the misconception here the misconception is just because you make a knowledge based refutation of an individual this individual could be from ahl sunnah he could be upon the way of the salaf he could be an alim it could be who is upon the way of the self just because a knowledge based refutation is made of that individual does this now automatically mean this is tabdi this now you know this is declaring to be an innovator is is this binding the answer is no the answer is no right because <coughs> there is you know there is a rad there is a naqd there is tahdhir there is uh, tabdi all of these are different things and and one does not necessitate or make necessary tabdi right i'll i'll give you um you know i'll give you uh, an illustration which is that sometimes you know that you have to warn from an individual because of a specific issue or a specific qadiyah and i'll give you one i'll give you one one well known example Uh, fr- from among the scholars sheikh ibn thaymin rahimahullah ta'ala he many decades back you know and, and before he passed away rahimahullah while a long while before that he wrote something and he said about the ma'iyah of allah the ma'iyah of allah the allah he he's with you right he said it is dhatiyah right in one of his uh, writings and so another scholar sheikh hamuda tawaji rahimahullah ta'ala he wrote an entire book refuting sheikh ibn thaymin rahimahullah on that statement and sheikh ibn baz rahimahullah he read that book and he praised and supported that book and then sheikh ibn thaymin himself rahimahullah against his own self supported and aided that book as well meaning which is a, a refutation of his own mistake right so just because you correct an error that has been made does this automatically necessitate tabdi of course not right because because everyone and anyone can make can make a mistake but a person of the sunna will take back that that mistake right because they desire only the sunna and because they slipped or they erred or they misunderstood or it was the slip of the tongue or whatever it might be then they, then 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 they come back so meaning that it, there, there there are many scenarios in situations where an individual who is from the people of the sunna or among the people of the sunna 
in an issue, an, a mas'ala, a qadiyya, issue, whatever, he may be criticized for that. It could be a knowledge-based issue he's erred in. It could, could be uslub, right? It could be like just uh, approach and behavior. It could be some idea. It could be some issue, right? And just because he is criticized and, uh, you know, spoken about that does not mean that he's automatically become a, a mubtadi, like, you know, someone who's automatically an innovator, right? And likewise, it is also the case that you could warn against an individual who is from the people of the sunnah without that necessitating tabdi either, right? Some people you might find some harshness, right? Some people you might find some lenience. In fact, even historically speaking, we know that amongst the people of, of hadith, the scholars of hadith, muhaddithin, we know that amongst, the, amongst them were those who were a bit lenient, right? They were, they were criticized for their leniency in, in the narrators. So they were too lenient. And others were basically too harsh. So that's why their statements weren't really taken uh, on their own, right? Because of, because of, of the lenience and the harshness that, 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 that came from them. This does not mean now that they are mubtadi'ah, dullal, misguided, no. Right? But sometimes it is the case that someone, even it may be a person of the sunnah, for whatever reason, uh, precaution needs to be taken from him in a certain area, in a certain issue. It does not necessitate that he has now become, you know, an innovator or that, you know, he's been declared an innovator or anything like that. No. And so there are many, many, many uh, reasons you know, why a person might be subject to criticism, uh, to refutation, and not in every case is it the case that he is being declared an innovator, right? Also, a person um, <clears throat> might, um, you know, a person might fall into innovation, and so we might describe and say, this person's statement is a bid'ah. Or we might say this person's action is a bid'ah. Or we might say this person's behavior is a bid'ah. This is not the same thing as declare, declaring him to be a mubtadir. Right? This is only simply describing an act of it. It is possible <coughs> for a person of the sunnah to do an action or to say a statement which is bid'ah. But that does not make him a mubtadir. Right? And so there's, the scholars, they distinguish. They have some specific terms. Right? So someone who uh, acts upon an innovation, right, a speech or an action, you know, they may say this person is, is a person of innovation, sahibu bid'ah, right? meaning that he, is, he, he speaks with or he acts upon an innovation. That is not the same as saying mubtadir, meaning one who actually innovates into the religion or who persists upon an innovation after it has been made clear to him. Why? Because now he's calling other people to his innovation. So this is a mubtadi in the religion. So they distinguish between saying a person is a sahibu bid'ah and between saying a person is a mubtadi. Right? A mubtadi is the one who basically they, they describe him absolutely that he is a, a, an actual innovator in the religion or when the proof has been established upon him and he refuses to let go of his innovation, then this person is a, is a, is a mubtadi. So the point being that not every person who is criticized or refuted for something, does it necessitate that he is being declared a mubtadi. And in between, so in between this, you know, the mubtadi, where you declare something to mubtadi, and from here, people can have different behaviors and have different mistakes and different errors and there's a period of time here or there's a gap here you know which is which which is the spectrum of of you know things here it's not like okay he's been refuted therefore he's a mubtadi no and this is this is the false understanding of, of the his being i'm going to read to you some narrations from the salaf just to illustrate this to you that they clearly understood this right so allah laka rahimahu ta'ala he reports Abdullah bin Umar Sarkhasi, who is the scholar of the Khazar, Khazar in the area called the Khazar. He said, I ate a single meal, I ate a single meal with a mubtadi, 
and Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak. Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak from the Imams of the Salaf. Heard of it, so he said, I will not speak to him for 30 days. Okay, does this now mean that Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak has now declared, you know, Abdullah ibn Umar al-Sarqasi to be a Mubtadi? No. This is now, he's seen something from him, which is unbefitting for a person of the Sunnah. And to show my disapproval and my dislike, I'm keeping away from you for 30 days. I'm not going to speak to you. Because this deed of yours is, you know, it's, 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 it's harmful. It's harmful. Well, because if you're a person of, of knowledge and prominence and people say, oh, yeah, yeah, he was sat with, uh, you know, so-and-so innovator. It must be okay to sit with him then. You are aiding in the, the, the destruction of Islam by these types of actions. So Abdullah bin al-Mubarak said, I'm not going to speak to you for 30 days for what you've done. You should know better. Right? Does this now mean that this is... It's not tabdi. This is not tabdi. But this is where, you know, certain stances need to be taken towards certain people for a wisdom and a benefit. Right? So it's not the case of so-and-so being refuted or so-and-so being boycotted, therefore automatically mubtadi. <coughs> This is, this is not what we know. What we know is what we, what we see from <coughs> the Salaf and the Ulama in which there is wisdom. But this is the, the, these are from the misconceptions of the people who don't study these affairs. Right? They don't study the way of the Salaf. And they don't know the principles of, of, of this religion. And this is why they're always in confusion. Always in confusion. So, another narration. Ibn Waddah al-Qurtubi rahimahullah ta'ala in his book Al-Bida'a He's narrating from one of the Imams of the Salaf who said, I was walking alongside Amr, Amr bin Ubaid al Mu'tazili. Uh, this is the head of the Mu'tazila, Amr bin Ubaid. He's in the early second century, right? In the time of uh, Ibn Sirin and, you know, that, that era. And he said, I was walking alongside Amr bin Ubaid al Mu'tazili. And Ibn Aun saw me. Ibn Aun, from the, again, from the Imams of the Salaf. Then he turned away from me for two months. Right? So he saw him walking with the head of the Mu'tazila. Amr bin Ubaid al Mu'tazili. Remember, in that time, you know, they hadn't fully developed the full Mu'tazili doctrine in that early period, right? Later on, when, when the later scholars, you know, Al-Qadi, Abdul Jabbar, and many others, and they wrote books, they outlined, you know, Al-Usul, al the, the five principles in their religion. But early on, this wasn't really known, right? And it wasn't as, as clear and apparent. It was known that they were making certain statements of misguidance in Al-Qadr and speaking ill of the Muhaddithin and things like that. So Ibn Aun saw me, then he turned away from me for two months. Why is this? Because there's something of behavior, something, something of lenience, something of opposition to what, what we find in the texts of the Qur'an and the Sunnah that, that he fell into. So he was boycotted for two months. Not in the sense that you are, you are a misguided, deviant innovator, no. But in the sense that this is, this is some discipline that you, that you need. Right? For doing something uh, like this. Because it is, it is bringing deception and harm Deception for the, for the common Muslim and harm upon the religion, your behavior. Right? Another narration, Ibn Abi Hatim, who narrates from Abdul Aziz al Uwaisi, who said, When Ismail bin Abi Uwais went out towards Hussein bin Abdullah bin Dama'ira, and this reached Imam Malik. This is Imam Malik now. In other words, Ismail bin Abi Uwais went out to a particular individual and this reached Imam Malik, and so Imam Malik, he boycotted him for 40 days because he, Malik, was not pleased with him. Not pleased with him for sitting with this person of, you know, whatever deviation he had. This is the way of the people of knowledge. Back in those times, right? And this is in relation to people of the sunnah. This does not necessitate now that they have become mubtad. No. It doesn't mean that we, you know, we declare, no. But this is... It shows that it's not, it's not the case of just because you make a rad or you make a naqd, a criticism, or you make a, a, a tahdeer even that you warn 
right, from a trait or a behavior or a statement or a position, you know, that, that a person of the sunnah has, does not mean that this now means tabdir. Automatically, this is now, no, it no, doesn't mean that at all. And uh, Abu Ja'far Muhammad bin al-Hassan bin Harun al mausli said, I asked Abu Abdullah Ahmed bin Hanbal, I am from the people of Mausil and the majority of those in our town are Jahmiyyah. And the affair of Al-Karabisi, who said, my recitation of the Quran is created, has appeared there. This is a speech that began to appear. So Imam Ahmad replied, beware of this Karabisi. Do not speak to him and do not speak to, those, to whoever speaks to him. So I said to him, this statement in your view and whatever branches from it, it is all from the saying of Jaham. And Imam Ahmed said, yes, all of it is from the saying of Jaham bin Safwan. Anyway, there are many other narrations like this. All of this, indi what, what does this indicate? This indicates showing lenience towards the people of deviation, lenience towards the people of misguidance, right? This is what happened to the people of previous religions to the Yahud, to the Nasara. And that's why they have an altered religion. They have a religion which is Mubaddal, Muharraf. It is altered, distorted. But this will not happen to Islam. And it will not happen to Islam precisely because of this methodology that we find of the Ahl Hadith, of the people of Athar, of the people who follow the way of, of the Salaf, because all of these things that we are discussing, they are part and parcel of the preservation the sound creed, the sound methodology, and, you know, correct uh, uh, principles. Now, so once we understand all of this, it should be clear now that there can be from time to time certain people who ascribe to the sunnah, who may be from the sunnah, they may be scholars, they may, may, may have uh, knowledge and, and, and fiqh and so on and so forth, but they fall into certain things. They do not take or hold the right position against certain individuals or they might have some ta'assub they might have some hawa they might have or some other affiliation or relationship right because someone is you know an associate or, or a companion and there are many examples from recent history for example the mubtadi ikhwani mubtadi by the name of abul hasan al-ma'ribi an egyptian used to be takfiri with ikhwan al muslimin he went to uh, you know yemen studied for a short while paid a few visits to sheikh albani rahimahullah ta'ala became well known and really he was just a concealed ikhwani who was waiting for the major scholars to die right sheikh albani sheikh bin ba sheikh nuthaymin rahimahullah sheikh muqbil when they all passed away 1999 2000 2001 this man came out openly with his revolution and started bringing all of these new well they're not new principles but they they uh, reformulated principles, which are the same principles of, of the Ikhwan, right? And he began to, you know, try to uh, spread them amongst the people of the, of the Sunnah. And so the scholars refuted him, exposed him, demolished all of his false uh, principles and arguments. And so when that becomes clear, it is obligatory upon everyone to, to, to follow suit, right? And to hold the correct position towards this innovator right you don't once the hujja is established you don't have an excuse anymore not to take the correct position towards this individual but then some other people came along because he was an, a friend of theirs an associate of theirs and said oh no, no no we're still advising him we're still advising him even though his affair becomes absolutely clear you have no excuse now right you have to you have to follow the truth it's not like we said, you don't follow Hawa. It's not an Ada. It's not a Tariqa or Riasa or, or you know, Madhab or whatever or, or companionship or associate. You know, it's nothing like that. You have to follow uh, the truth. So there were other people who came after who, who were not willing to let go of this uh, innovator. Al-Halabi, uh, al Usama Al-Qusi, Salim Al-Hilali. All of these, they, 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 this is where they went astray as well, partly on this issue. Because they could not let go of this individual Al-Ma'ribi. And eventually, they started, some of them started speaking even with the very same principles as, as him. Right? So the point being, there can be circumstances and situations where a person of knowledge, who, uh, or is known for knowledge, he may be cautioned against, he may be warned against. It may be said, 
that you avoid his gatherings, you avoid his lectures, you avoid whatever, because there are some actions that we've seen from him which warrant caution. Right? And an example of this, like a more recent example of this, is the example of uh, Muhammad bin Hadi, you know, who's uh, you know, a scholar from Medina. And unfortunately, he fell into some evil conduct and evil ways. You know, in a masjid in Medina, he accused a brother of committing adultery and fornication, which was a false slander. And um, he started attacking students of knowledge and, you know, giving them labels. And basically, it's like harshness, harshness, right? Without any evidence, without any uh, dalil. And uh, uh, eventually, uh, the issue got taken to court and he was convicted by the court that he was guilty of that for which there is a, a well-known uh, punishment and he was refuted also by, by the scholars you know uh, Sheikh Rabi and others of, you know who exposed his exaggeration his, his um, injustice and not having any evidence for what he says and whatever and his affair became very very clear right he actually also caused many many splits in the Muslim world he caused splits in Algeria he caused splits in, you know, uh, across Europe, everywhere. Even in the UK, he caused splits, right? His affair became absolutely clear with evidences. Now, once that happens, you have to now follow the truth. You can't now start siding with him and defending him and, and, and making excuses for him, right? Because when, when a person does that, it means now you don't, you don't value the truth anymore. And you yourself now become suspect, Right? And so this is why we say, you know, with, with uh, uh, why we want, why, why we, we follow the way of the scholars. When we say, for example, when so-and-so comes to your land, don't go and visit his, don't, don't attend his lectures, don't visit his conference, don't whatever. Because there's something in the behavior of this individual that requires caution. We don't know where he's going to go, which direction he's going to go. Right? That's why you, you've seen warnings from uh, Sheikh Rabi and you've seen warnings from others that we don't attend uh, the, the gatherings and the places of uh, Sheikh Suleiman al ruhaili because he is a man who is defending Muhammad bin Hadi upon batil, upon falsehood. And when a man does that, and he doesn't follow the evidences, and he makes excuses for, for that which is clear, plain falsehood, then caution is to be taken, right? We're not saying, tabdi, mubtadi, no one's saying that at all, and this would be a lie if anyone said that. right? And anyone who says that, it's basically, basically his own misconception, because he doesn't understand what we are discussing today, where sometimes there can be a statement or an action or a behavior or a position taken by someone who ascribes to the sunnah, who is, you know, uh, known by the people to be upon the sunnah. But we see in his behavior certain things where he's not conforming and not, not valuing the truth, whether it is with Muhammad bin Hadi, most recently, or whether it, was, whether it is with Ibrahim al Rahili, who is his cousin, because he was also refuted for many of his false principles which he brought, right, and he was refuted by, by the scholars for that, he never took a true position in that, in, in, in that issue either. So when you see a man not taking the correct positions in these issues that affect the, 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 the Salafi methodology and the effect which affects unity, then this is an area of caution, right? And you've already heard the statements I've read to you from uh, the likes of, you know, uh, Imam Malik, and, um, you know, from uh, Ibn al-Mubarak and other than them, this is how they used to be. Towards a person who, 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 from whom you see actions, behaviors, positions, statements that are not praiseworthy. And that are not upon the truth or for the truth. Right? So, inshallah, you should understand these affairs. And this will remove the confusion. It does not mean that just because a criticism is made of an individual or refutation is made of an individual, or even a warning is made from an individual, that this now automatically means that we've made tabdi. But no, even you know that um, the Messenger of Allah said to Mu'adh anhu, because he was leading the prayer with some people, and he was making the prayer to be very long, and he was causing hardship upon some people. So the Messenger said, Afatan anta ya Mu'adh? Are you, are you a Fatan or Mu'adh? This is, this is because of a deed that's not praiseworthy. Don't, don't cause burden and hardship upon the people. Keep the prayer short. And you know, the son of Abdullah bin Umar, the son of Abdullah bin Umar, you know, he said, we're going to prevent the women from going to the mosque. 
And Abdullah bin Umar said, well, the messenger said, do not prevent the female servants of Allah from going to the mosque. And he said, no, Allah, well, I'm going to prevent them. So he never spoke to him again after that. Right? Sometimes when you see opposition from an individual, from a person, from whatever, then certain action is warranted. Right? This does not mean, you know, tabdi and you've written that person off as a misguided deviant. And if, no, it's simply a matter of caution. Take caution. Right? And in caution, there is safety. As you know, the scholars say that in taking caution, there is safety. Just take caution.